Welcome, family. I've been missing you. Thank you for joining me for another spoiler review of Power Season 4, Episode 6, New Man. Remember, this is a spoiler review, so you've been warned. Okay, we're going to start off with Ghost waking up in the bed alone. Come on, Tasha. This man just came home. He just beat a life sentence or a possible death row sentence. You got to give him some of them sugar walls. First night home, you got to give him some of them sugar walls. Now you got an empty house. Kids is going here and there, big mamas. The purpose of having that empty home was for you and him to have some quality time. I mean, he's been in jail, hopefully not doing nothing. And you've been home, hopefully not doing nothing. So there's no reason that you two shouldn't be together at this moment in time. I don't care what y'all going through. I don't care how you feel. Y'all worked very hard to get this moment. Okay, Joe, Ghost, talk to her a little bit about Silver. You see her eyes moving all over the place. I also noticed that she calls Silver Terry. So she's a little closer to Silver than she should be. I think her and Silver messing around. All right, <clears throat> Ghost goes off to Truth. At Truth, he feels home. I mean, he shows up with the truth, looking good, smelling good, feeling good. He is good. He spends more time at truth than anywhere else. So he feels at home there. But then comes Simon to break up his little happiness. And Simon lets him know, huh, your wife borrowed money from me, and I'm here to collect. And it's Ghost can't believe his wife borrowed money. He's like, how much did she borrow? Simon won't tell him how much she borrowed. But he will tell him this. I'll clean that slate clean if you take this job. If you run my real estate venture because you're a minority, we'll get the minority contracts and the minority funding. So if you become the CEO, I'll wipe the slate clean because I'll make a lot of money. Ghost, we don't get the details of the deal with the real estate and him because it fades out. But we do get Tony calling Ghost at some point. Asking to speak to Tommy. Now, Ghost, I don't think I have to really worry too much about this Tony situation. Because this murder happened in jail. They don't really investigate murders that well in jail. One. And two, the cameras didn't work. So there's no witnesses. Also, the murder suspect was found dead at the scene of the murder. So I don't know if they're going to open up a new murder case based on a convict's recommendation. So Ghost might not have to worry too much about that. But you don't want to worry at all. So... He'll get that phone call to Tommy. Also, he doesn't know that Kanan's outside waiting to snatch him up. But <clears throat> that's okay at this point. All right, so Ghost finally gets home later on that day to Tasha. And Tasha's like, we need to talk about Tariq. And he's like, no, we need to talk about you. And Ghost's like, I can't believe that you made a deal with this devil. And she calls him the devil and this and that. So he, and, and Tasha, you were the one that said... Any deals or any decisions we made, y'all make them together. And then you're the one that go behind his back. You're listening to your boyfriend, Simon. I mean, it's your boyfriend, Silver, instead of doing what's best for your family. All right. So, Ghost says, we should have been good. You had the million dollars. You didn't have to pay my bail. Actually, you had two million dollars you had access to because you had the million also from Tommy. And you didn't pay no bail. So, her eyes again, moving all around nervously. She did something with that million dollars. Silver got her to do something. Don't know what, but he got her to do something. I believe he's working for Simon. All right, so <clears throat> she tells Ghost, um, she pours him a drink. Now, that's a red flag right there. Because we already know Ghost got problems drinking. Because they discussed that before. Her and Tommy was worried before about, about him drinking. Also, his father was an alcoholic. So, that might run in his family. I don't know. They don't really discuss that too much. And she tells Ghost, you're smart. You're smarter than him. You'll get out of this. She just capping his head all up. And that's supposed to be your wife. So Ghost sits down nice and calmly. And is like, I don't know how to trust you, Tasha. That's right, Ghost. She is silver. The fact that she ain't giving no yams right there, that should have told you something. Them yams might belong to silver. She didn't even sleep in the same bed with you. She didn't want to hold you. I ain't feeling too good with that situation. All right, we're going to talk about Julio. <clears throat> Julio meets up with Dre, finally. <clears throat> and Jay disrespects Julio right from the beginning. Dre says, what you call me here for? I go over to the club. Ghost is at the club waiting for me, so this meeting is over. Julio should have smacked Dre. Like, I'm the boss. You do what I say. You be where I'll tell you to be. Don't worry about anything else. 
So Julio started asking him about Kanan at the club with uh, Kanan and Dre mean. Dre disrespects him again. You asking all questions like a little B. Should have did him again. But who, Dre explains that, you know, Kanan came to the club wanting to be down, told me he can't be down, and this and that. And he went on about his way. He's like, did you tell Tommy? Because it's like a green light on Kanan if you see him. He's like, no, I ain't tell Tommy yet. But I got this for you. So Dre fishing again. Dre tells him, I got a new connect for you. Because the Dominican boy running his mouth about these keys telling everybody he's going to be a problem. We're going to need to replace him. So I got a new connect for you. He said, I got to run this past Tommy. And then Dre disrespects him again. But talking about, but Tommy got to wipe your butt. Just crazy. Julio, your backhand should have been worn out on that face. All right. But Julio goes for it. I don't think, I don't understand why Julio's this gullible. I mean, Julio grew up, he, had, he was in a gang. He was running with Dre. He was running with Tommy and Ghost for several years. He should not be this gullible. He should be more street savvy than falling for these little tricks from Dre. So Dre sets up, I mean, with the Connect and Julio, but the Connect turns out to be 718 gang members. Because Dre set that up for the 718 gang members to kill Julio, but he told them you can't kill him like a 718 would kill him. You got me like it's somebody else. Because Ghost did vouch for this boy, even though Ghost is out, would make him fair game. But Ghost is Ghost, and they do respect Ghost's name. Because if Ghost retaliate, he'll come at the Dre and 718 gang. And they don't want that. They don't want no retaliation from Ghost. So, they there. It's three against one. Julio pins one boy up, did his thing good. He should have ran then, but he didn't run. He stayed, so there he laid. Julio died right there. Don't be too proud to run. Three against one. You got your opening, get out there, fight another day. You catch them one by one. All right, so Tommy's in Chicago beating with the boss, and the boss wants him to leave Ghost alone. So Tommy's like, yo, I've been down this road before. I'm not killing Ghost. And he's like, no, 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 no. We don't want you to kill him right now. It's too hot. Just stay away from him. Tommy ain't going to ever stay away from Ghost. Ghost is all he has. If he stay away from Ghost, he might as well kill himself. So, Tommy wants to go back. They're like, no, no, you hang out with us. They're spending the day. So, they haven't done it. They haven't drank. And they, Tommy talking about his childhood, first job. He almost slipped and talked about the time he burnt somebody. But they flipped that story. And then <clears throat> Tommy says, I'm surprised y'all gave it okay with Mulan. I didn't like him eating people, but he was a good dude. I'm surprised y'all gave it okay for me to kill him. So, because Tommy is intoxicated, he doesn't see the look that they give each other. Because he missed that, Tommy, you on business. This is business. It's not a social visit. You're supposed to still be on point. Can't be getting drunk like that, baby. All right. So you missed that. If you would have seen that, you'd have been on guard, or you would have changed the subject, or you'd have explored the question a little bit more. But you totally missed it. So now y'all walking out in the parking lot. Your friend is eating. Tommy's still chit chatting, feeling good. It doesn't hit him until he hear the trunk pop. Boop boop. Then he's like, "Whoa, what's up?" Too late. Knock him aside his head, in the trunk he go. Now they're going off. they driving. Tommy comes to a little bit, but it's too late. Boom, they're at the spot. Lift the trunk up, took him out, threw him in front of a hole already dug. That's your grave. There you will lay. So Tommy sees a third boy come up. Tommy want to kill that boy. And the boy says, I ain't know Tommy killed Mulan. He told me the gang killed Mulan. And Tommy's like, yo, you know, we killed Mulan together. But his okay. And then, uh, so Tommy closes his eyes and thinks happy thoughts. And his happy place was Holly. And he didn't see Tatiana talking to the boss until the boss was really went down. So all he hears is a gunshot. Bow! And he look, opens his eyes. Sir boy's dead in the hole. And he's starting to cover him up already. And Tommy's like, whew. And he's headed back to New York. All right, so he's heading back to New York. He drive past Cleveland, see a sign for Cleveland. He thinks about something that Hallie told him about her uncle. So he pulls off. Uncle's still selling real estate. He sees him. He goes into the house. Uncle's like, yo, it's a little early for the showing. Tommy just walking around, looking around. I think he's looking for cameras or something. He's looking around, don't see nothing. He tells the uncle that, yo, I know Hallie. He's like, oh, you know my niece? He said, yeah, she, she told me what she used to do to her, but she used to spend the, the uh, nights with you. And he was like, yeah, you know, Holly used to ask for it. And he was like, she was nine years old. Yeah, but that girl, he turned around and hit him with a baseball bat. Bow! And Tommy did his thing. Ain't no love for them type of cats. 
Only problem is time. This is open house that's opening soon, so people will be coming. And also, your car is parked out there. The neighbors might see it. People will get a description of you. It's broad daylight. But I know you're going to get rid of the car. Your description, hopefully nobody gets a good look at you. The feds still do want you. That's the only problem. But hopefully you get away clean. Tommy did that as a tribute to Holly. Because he, he did that to, because what she did, what he did to Holly, he did that as a tribute to her. All right. So, Ghost and Kanan. Kanan picks up Ghost outside of Truth. Throws him in the car. Ghost like, what you want? Ghost thinks he's going to kill him. He's like, I got your son. You got my son. What do you want? And he said, I want money. Ghost like, I just got out of jail. I don't have no money. You know, I just came home, baby. I ain't got nothing. I got the clothes on my back. My wife don't spend up all the money. I ain't got nothing. So, Kanan like, you better think of something. I know you can think of something. So they go to Tommy's spot where he, where he got a stash house at. So they talking about robbing it. They running down, they bonding over this. And they go in there and rob the place. They did a smooth. Them brothers were good together. And it was like a bonding experience for them. So they got the money. Cannon kills one bull because the bull's about to pull out a gun on, on Cannon and then a ghost. Um, so they heading to see Jukebox. So they're in the car. And they reminiscing how they used to be like brothers and how close they was and how they came up together and the stuff that, that uh Cannon taught Ghost and Ghost used that against him and Ghost, you know, he can't civilize a savage. So Ghost was like, I only had two options. That was one, kill you or put you away. And he couldn't kill you because you was like a brother to me. So he put him away and Cannon was like, you made the wrong decision because you're in this position now because you didn't kill me. So they trying to figure out, Ghost trying to figure out who is holding his son. And the first thing he thinks of is Tommy. <laughs> it wasn't Tommy. It's interesting that he thought of Tommy had this had Tyreek. But it wasn't Tommy. It was Jukebox. So they get to the crib. And, and uh, Kanan gives Ghost the gun. Ghost pulls the gun out on Kanan. Kanan's like, look, Jukebox is in there. I don't know who she got in there with her. Now, you can kill me and she kill your son and get the money. Or we can go in there and get your son. So Ghost choose to go in there and get his son. So Ghost goes in there as if he's being held hostage by Kanan. And he slips it, slips his bondage, and pulls out his gun. <coughs> Jukebox sees the gun and puts the gun, her gun at Tyreek's head and says she's going to kill Tyreek in front of him. And now she's pissed off at Kanan. So she makes Kanan, who's slim, tell Tyreek who he really is. And he's like, yo, I'm Kane and me and your father did things together. We did a lot of dirt, killing people, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And Jukebox went for the juggler because she upset. She's like, tell him who killed Sean. And Kane like, I killed Sean. I kill him again because he weak. He ain't strong like you. He weak. I kill him again. And that was too much for Kane. Now you got Kane starting to get emotional, feeling funny. You know, first him and Ghost bonding in the car. They feeling like brothers again. And then... Tyreek is like his little man, so he feeling some type of way about Tyreek, and then he talking about his son that he had to kill, that was too much, so as soon as Jukebox moved that gun away from Tyreek here, he lit her up, bow, bow, bow. Ghost runs to Tyreek, unties him, Ghost is hugging him, Tyreek ain't hugging him back, I don't know if Tyreek, not arms are numb, or Tyreek just doesn't feel like hugging his father, don't know, and Kanan got Ghost in his sights, he got the money in the hand, hammer in the other hand, he could take Ghost's wig off right now, but he looks at Tyreek, and Kanan chooses not to kill Ghost because Tyreek is there. So for Tyreek's sake, he didn't kill Ghost, and Kanan is off. All right, that's where it ends at. I'm going to give you some predictions real quick. I think Ghost is going to take Tyreek home, and once Tasha hears all that Ghost had to do to get Tyreek, I think later on she's going to tell him, about the relationship that she has with Silver. And that's going to be something. I think uh, Dre, out of necessity, is going to take Julio's spot. Tommy's going to move Dre to Julio's spot out of necessity. Because Dre is an entrepreneur. He shows initiative. Tommy doesn't trust Dre. But I think out of necessity, he's going to do that. And, of course, we know that Ghost is going to be working for Simon. So that means Tasha and Ghost are going to appear to, appear to be the perfect family again. All right, family, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Hit the notification button because I will be spinning up some other videos shortly. All right, and if you think of anything I could do to make it better because I'm new to this, leave it in the comments. All right, family, peace, and I love y'all.